Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good, babe. <laughs> we just made these three faux shiplap door ornaments using our Glowforge and a pass-through slot, and we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? <laughs> Welcome back. Do you like to do a build it or make it? Great, so do we. And we do it each week. This week, we're making some holiday door signs. I know that you've seen our post, probably saw our video last week, hopefully, that talked about what we're doing at the farmer's market and how we're selling out at the farmer's market. Sold out. Yeah. So, well, funny story that everyone at the farmer's market knows who we are because people are walking out with our signs. So we thought we would show you guys what we're making at the farmer's market that does be, seem to be selling well, so that maybe you can sell it and make yourself some extra cash this holiday season. Step one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna gather all of our supplies. <laughs> I'm not sure you have control over those arms. Really? <laughs> really. So this week, because we're making these door signs, we'll just be using MDF and some of our country chic paints. Uh, we'll be making an 18 inch round using our Glowforge and showing you how to use the pass-through slot to create your own 18 inch round. An 18 inch faux shiplap ornament round. Yeah. There's a lot of words to it. Thanks for all the... Details. Yeah. I'm a detail person today. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be using uh, pieces of MDF here. This is quarter inch MDF, cut at 19 wide by 24 inches deep. And then whatever else we is need, something a... similar to cut out our words that are gonna go on top of our faux shiplap rounds. There you go. Ornament. Ornaments. <laughs> <laughs> Ornament rounds, yeah. Step two, make all your cuts. Or whatever that was. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be using our Glowforge and there's a trick here, we're actually going to paint the board before we cut. If you have a Glowforge, you probably already know this tip or trick. If you do not, then it's a good trick to know because it really does keep those nice clean edges. If you don't have a Glowforge and you purchase one of our kits, we're going to show you how to paint a really cool little new tip that I learned on how to paint those letters uh, without getting paint on the edges of the cutout. So crisp, forward... clean, and quick. Yes, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that after the fact. But we're gonna paint this board first and we're gonna cut out our ship faux ship lap door ornament. So we're gonna give it a quick base coat. So we'll be making three ornaments today or three door rounds today. Each of them are gonna get a different color. One of them is going to get devotion. Simplicity. And we'll be using cranberry sauce to cut out the words of another one. Crinoline. Yeah, so there's two versions of white here. I thought I would just kind of showcase the two versions of white so we can see them when we're done, maybe. And this one is a whoop de doo It is. Yes, it is called whoop de doo <laughs> <laughs> That'll be for our Let It Snow ornament. It's going to give you that frozen winter look and feel. Oh, yeah. I get it. Look, it's the Partridge family. We thought we'd showcase the colors so you can see them all since they're big sheets like this. Pre-cut. Whoop-dee-doo, cranberry sauce at the bottom. Up here, this is devotion. And then I'm not sure which is which. Crinoline and simplicity. Now I can see a difference because I'm standing right here. Can you guys see that? I'm not sure if you'll be able to really see the difference on the film. Simplicity is a whiter white. Crinoline what? has has just a little touch of gray no like cream maybe just a just a wee bit it's not vanilla frosting i love vanilla frosting and it's definitely a cream color um it's just a little more warmer white than simplicity part of part b of step two as garrett always does before these go into the glowforge because it will be using that laser and burning the edges you'll want to mask it off so that it doesn't burn your painted board. We purchased our masking tape from Uline. Oh, this stuff is great. This is very sticky. It does not come up under the Glowforge. 
Like it stays down. We'll use our little Cricut scraper tool here to push it down and give it a nice seal. Not the singer. Not the singer. <laughs> Very satisfying to get that thing stuck down there with no wrinkles. Yeah, I mean, this stuff works great. I love it. All right, let's go get the glue forge. Step two we're going to continue with making our cuts. We've prepped our boards, we've moved over our glue forge so that we can include it in our filming here. And next step, the Glowforge app. The Glowforge app. <laughs> Here we're just choosing an image that was already uploaded. We click the three dots, choose Pro Pass Through Beta, turn that on, and then we load up our board. We push it all the way forward because it starts cutting from the bottom. We're using MDF from Home Depot. So here we're going to go up here, select our material, thick draft board. And then we're going to make sure that the outside cuts and the inside scores. Push it all the way down, maximize our board usage. And then click print. Notice how the laser has been lined up to the music. That's what Garrett spends his time doing. <laughs> but it's fun. Once it completes its first cut, then you'll see it's taking pictures to line up the second cut. And once it does that, confirm, and it starts cutting again. Look how perfect that lines up. Super impressive. <sighs> came out great. And here we're just cutting out the believe it fits on one small board. No pass through needed. Step three, time to paint. Good news is we were able to paint and mask and cut. So all of our rounds are already painted. And we did that for one of our sets of words. Uh, oh, actually yeah. two sets let of it, words. Let it snow. And the other one. Let's Believe. One. Believe. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But we didn't do it for the Merry Christmas because when I ship the Merry Christmas out, if you guys order this kit, um, it'll come in this board like this already. We just go ahead and tape it so that it doesn't pop out of here. But it makes it so it's nice and sturdy for shipping and these little tiny pieces don't break. So I wanted to show you a paint technique that I found that seems to work out really well. So. Step three, time to paint. <laughs> okay, ridiculous. So I found that, and maybe you guys already know this, but this was new to me and it was like, ah, oh, such a great idea. I've seen tips that says, hey, leave it in your thing so it doesn't get on the edges, but it does. It just bleeds right down in there and makes a mess. These are your makeup sponges. So if you dab this in a little bit of paint, it gives you just enough paint to cover the surface, but not bleed down into the edges. So that's what I'm going to do. And because this is a whole thing, I'm still going to leave it in the board here because that's just one, one more layer of protection, I guess, to keep it from bleeding across the sides. Yeah. What do you think? Looks um, good? Think it looks good, right? Looks great. Ours may be a little weak. Did you say my R's are weak? Yeah. I think you're wrong, Kim. That was a strong R. That was a strong, was a strong R. All right. So I can't really lift it up now, but we just dabbed all the paint on and let's see how she looks. Let's see how the edges look. Yeah, look at those perfect edges. Mm, I got a little bit of bleed over here, but that's okay. These Nothing little, little ones, sharpie couldn't take yeah, care of. These little ones are easy to get off with a sharpie. Step four, time to assemble. That's, <laughs> that's pretty, right. That's pretty good. <laughs> You're doing okay. <laughs> so assembly for these is really easy. All we're gonna do is take off of our, take off our uh, 
uh, masking tape, and then glue down our letters. Look at that. Genuine faux shiplap. Now there are some burn marks on here. I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna hold it still. Can you see that a little, where well, the line's not perfect, that's a little bit of a burn mark. And that will come right off with a little alcohol and a Q-tip or a paper towel. Just wipe that right off. It's... Ah! <laughs> the accents <laughs> I, can't, I can't do that so I get a lot of questions about the bows so I'm gonna show you how we make this cute little bow here okay so I prefer to use and I hope you can see this up close you can see in the overhead this mesh is my background see how it's a nice tight weave mesh but I only have this mesh which is a little bit it's wider so weave. <laughs> Karen said it looks sloppy um, but this is what I have on hand. So this is what we're going to use. That's what I just made this bow out of. Uh, it works just fine. Test bow. Because it, it's kind of in the back. So, let's see, can you see overhead? Yes. All right, Garrett, you want to make one too? Yeah, sure. All right, so the, you're going to just fold this over um, and you're going to make your bow overall bow width, this little burlap piece, nine inches. So you make it at about nine, and you just want to uh, overlap the back pieces just enough so that they pinch together. So it doesn't have to be anything perfect. So you see how I've overlapped them here? And the overall width is about nine inches. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You got that? Got it. You want to use this? Sure. I really put that there for you because I thought he would say, I don't know what nine inches is, I gotta see. And then you're gonna just use four different pieces of ribbon. I like to have kind of a solid and a glitter in mine. It just gives it a little bling. So we're gonna use this glittery green here. And I just line it up. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just line it up like that. And then I try and add a stripe and a polka dot. I feel like those are good contrasting patterns. So that's what I have here, a red and white stripe, a red and white polka dot. And then one of us, is, and then a pattern. And so this is um, candy canes and gumdrops kind of thing. One of us is gonna use that. And one of us is going to use this cute um, elf feet. It's a cute little elf feet pattern. Cut this one for you. There you go. So now I have four pieces of ribbon that are somewhat coordinating. See that? And then the next step would be to um, give him a fish tail. Yeah fishtail the ends and you just simply fold it in half cut from the bottom to the top at an angle fold it in half cut from the bottom to the top at an angle <laughs> now you can flip it over so that the solid piece you, those are set those aside for just a moment <laughs> flip it over okay great Ooh, you got a big bow going there. You're rocking a big bow. Yeah, I got. Look, some of us like big bows. I can't lie. It's gonna look a little. <laughs> I think this is the biggest tip of them all. You want to gather this. So I usually start in the middle, 
and then I gather the top and I gather the bottom. You see like I see how I've done there? I've just kind of gathered it. See what I've got? Tuck this between your first finger and your thumb and hold it with that, that tuck it way down to where your thumb and your first finger meet. Tuck it down in that little pocket, yep. So that you have your main finger open. And then I usually start with the green on the bottom and you wanna just kinda do the same thing, gather that. And then I'm gonna crisscross. I'm gonna crisscross here and I'm gonna hold it with my finger. I'm gonna do my pattern. And I'm gonna make a little X. I'll do my polka dot and I'll make another X right across the top. And then another X right across the top. And then I'm using this little wire ribbon right here, or ribbon wire. Cut it. I just wrap that over the top here. I lift up my finger, wrap it around, holding it tight. And then yes, if you're doing it by yourself, that is exactly what I do. <laughs> Hold it and I pull tight. See how I've just tied it nice and tight there? I put my finger in there and do it once more. I usually make Garrett hold it for me, but I'm showing you how to do it by yourself. <laughs> and then that's it. You just fluff your little bow, give it some... Oh, crap. He does that a lot every time he pulls for me. <laughs> I don't know why he thinks he's going <laughs> to My bow doesn't look like your bow. Okay, well, you didn't follow directions. You See, this is what you don't do. You don't stack your ribbon. You see how Garrett has stacked his ribbon? You have to crisscross your ribbon so that when you're done, they look like that. You've got one's up, one's down, one's up, one's down. So you see the contrast there. See that? Fair, better. <sighs> look at his, look at his, look at his burlap in the back. It's, and you don't, maybe you don't want it giant size like that. It looks a little silly back there. Just want it kind of hidden back there a little bit. There's a nice little base for it. Okay, that's better. All right. I think I have Garrett's bow down to a normal size bow. And these are so quick and easy. I can just whip these out and put them right on there. Yep. And it doesn't take a lot of time. I leave the little strings and the great thing about this is it already has the door hanger associated with it. I mean, it's just like built into it, I mean. And then you just tie it right on there. Done and done. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna spray this one with some glitter clear coat. Oh yeah. Make it pop. I'll hit the others with some matte clear coat. I'll just hold the bow out of the way. These were, for the last couple of weeks, we've been bringing these to the farmer's market and they're the very first things to sell. And then people come by and say, do you have anything for Christmas? <laughs> and I say, I did five minutes ago. <laughs> I did between nine and 9.15 kind of thing there. They really do sell out fast. Yeah, so I mean, I these jams go fast. Like some lady bought it out of the car, pulling it out of the car and she's like, how much? I said, That's... let me go find Kim in the square. And then last week, uh, you want to hear a funny story? No, I'll save the funny story. <laughs> we'll save the funny story for our patron after show. Yeah, this is probably a good time to plug that. If you want to join us over on Patreon and become a patron of Kim and Garrett Make It, we do an after show after each video. We share some outtakes. I share some funny stories, either funny stories just about Garrett in general. <laughs> I don't Sometimes. Know how I should take that. Uh, well, last week I shared your how Garrett got in trouble oh. and had to do the dishes for a week. Yeah, how I had a week of dishes. That's right. Yes, and he was a good sport and he did them because he was, he was, you know. All right. Look at the time. <laughs>
It's that time again. <laughs> it's time to go. So we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. And for everybody else, we'll see you on the after show. Yeah. <laughs> to balance. Yeah, they're so easy to balance. They're just so symmetrical and just so fine. Are you gonna break that thing? <laughs> it might be easier upside down. Here, put it on my finger. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Circus trick. Circus tricks. <laughs>